Happy Monday, all you minties. I guess it's Mark Spector Moon Knight Monday. Yeah, sure. Anyway, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And today, join me for your advanced look at the Mark Spector Moon Knight Omnibus Volume 1 from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. Before going any further, I do want to thank David Gabriel, the fine folks at Marvel, for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on March 28th or 29th, depending on where you get your books. Now, this is the direct market cover, and it is the one that's supplied by, actually, one of the editors on the book, Carl Potts. And on the left-hand side is your standard edition cover. And that one is supplied by the legendary Dennis Cohen. It's really hard to choose which cover to get here. But Carl Potts' artwork on covers is almost impossible to find. So this, I had to go with this one. Everything else on the inside is the same. So underneath the dust jacket, everything else is the same. So let's take it back to this omnibus. So this is the series that started in 1989. And we're going to take a closer look at this cover here. Here you see the character of Moon Knight, Mark Spector. And you see his ship up there. I love that. And who's in there? Jean-Paul. That's who's in there. Frenchie. Marvel Omnibus. Mark Spector Moon Knight. I love the fact that they have a one because that always gives me hope. Always Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day. Always gives me hope that there's going to be a volume two. And here you have the characters of Spidey and Mooney, as Spider-Man likes to call him. And then the back of the book, a new face of the Moon Knight. And it really is a new face. It does have a parental advisory, and that's mainly due to the graphic novel that is collected in here. And the book retails for $125. Now, if you're wondering where this fits into the reading order of Moon Knight, this is where I'm putting it. So right now we have the classics one and two, and we have the, I guess what I call the modern era of Moon Knight. Now, there could be more after the modern era, but there certainly could be a volume two to wrap up this era of late 80s, early 90s Moon Knight. So I would love to see that someday, especially with a Stephen Platt cover. All right, but back to this, let's go ahead and remove the dust jacket. We have a basic design. I don't want to say basic, but a moon, which makes sense. And here's what the internal flaps look like. Moon Knight's longest running series. That is a fact. This one lasted, I think, 60 issues. And then, of course, the bio on the creators. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the pattern back here looks like a cloudy night. So it looks like there could be a moon behind the dark clouds there. Nice little touch. All right. So, yes, just the moon. No Marvel Omnibus, but just Mark Spector Moon Knight with a moon and a number one right there. And nothing on the back. Now, we are going to crack this open, and I'm going to talk about what this particular era of Moon Knight is like. I'm not going to go too deep into details or spoilers, but just in case, maybe minor spoilers for particularly the character of Midnight. I'll say minor spo spoilers for that character, because the character just shows up in a big story arc that was kind of a dangling plot that the original writer left behind when he left the book. So, we're going to crack this open, check out the artwork, and talk about the stories. And again, just minor spoilers. So, let's move on with this. Alright. Let's go ahead and crack the book open. We have some end sheets right there with Mark Spector's eye. I love that design. Eye. Just both eyes, not just one. Uh, Mark Spector Moon Knight right there. And here are your credits on the left-hand side, your table of contents on the right-hand side. Now, something I noticed on my, which I'll go back to when I'm doing an overview of the non-spoiler side, is this wrinkles in the first couple pages. And I'll go back to that. Uh, now, this right here does contain one of these notes that says this content uh, contains depictions of racism, sexual assault, and suicide. Now, that's something that I think everybody is doing every publisher is doing these days the alternative to that of course is something that's happened recently um, and that is not actually publishing the book so i'm okay with notes like that and i know it bothers some people like why would they even say that but it has to be said it's just the way that it is these days i much rather that be in there than anything censored out or for that matter 
any book not being printed or reprinted. All right, so we kick it off with Moon Knight, number one. Now, that's not the first time we've seen that in um, Omnibus. We've seen that in Omnis before. Uh, now we have a new era of Moon Knight. So this takes place after the original series, after the Fist of Khonshu miniseries, and now we have the late 80s, so this is 1989 era of Moon Knight. And we have Ch uh, Charles Dixon, Chuck Dixon, and Sal Valuto. Now, you may be familiar with Chuck Dixon. He's written things like Nightwing and Tim Drake Robin, Batgirl, Year One, which is freaking phenomenal, Birds of Prey, Batman, and Punisher. So, Sal Valuto, you may be familiar when I just did the overview of the Black Panther omnibus by Christopher Priest. He did a lot of the artwork on that. Well, he does a lot of the artwork in this particular omnibus. And Chuck Dixon writes most of this later on. It's Jam DeMatteis. There's a couple of fill-in issues with Howard Mackey. But this is about 24, 25 issues of Chuck Dixon's run on Moon Knight. Now, what they did here with the character of Moon Knight is they got rid of the idea of multiple personalities. So that was kind of taken back a little bit. They wanted to simplify the character of Moon Knight. So they just used Mark Spector as his alter ego. So it's just Mark Spector and Frenchie together. They have a cook named Chloe because, you know, Mark is rich. He's an ex-mercenary. He has a lot of money. Um, and then you start seeing characters from his past show up. So Marlene shows up. She gets a little bit jealous of Chloe. Uh, Bushman shows up. But now he is the leader of this fictional country in Africa. And he's coming full force. Now, the, one of the things that him and his man do is kidnap Marlene. So the first couple of issues... I love this right here, by the way. Guest cameo by Spider-Man. <laughs> I'll explain why I love that. The first couple of issues is about hunting down... Bushman and his men and getting Marlene back but the cool little twist about this is that Marlene isn't just some damsel in distress she's actually kind of a badass character she fights back she takes guns and starts trying to save herself I forgot to mention the inker on most of the earlier books here and that is Mark Farmer Mark Farmer probably a lot of people familiar from the pages of Marvel UK Excalibur for that matter inking a lot of Alan Davis's art and he really cleans up a lot of Sal Valuto's artwork so yes Marlene is kind of a badass she's not just gonna be sitting there waiting to be rescued so it's an old character from Doug Mench's run of course um, coming back and causing havoc in Mark Spector's life this right here is collected. This is the annual number two, I think. Punisher annual two. Yes, right here. I forgot to mention what this collects. Okay, so this collects Moon Knight 1 through 34, the series that started in 1989. It also collects Amazing Spider-Man 353 to 358. And Moon Knight Divided We Fall. And that is that graphic novel I was talking about. And the material from Punisher annual number two. This is where Mark Spector first reappeared in annual number two. But it's collected here after the storyline with Bushman. So this is the story where Punisher meets Moon Knight for the first time, and Moon Knight's been back in New York. So I don't know if this was the pitch to get Moon Knight a new series, or if this was just, because this is part of Atlanta's attacks, even though it has very little to it. It's just the Punisher and uh, Moon Knight teaming up to fight these snake people, or people that are being turned into snakes. I don't know if that was the original idea to kind of try it out, uh, to see how people receive Moon Knight these days in the late 80s, early 90s. Because he hadn't had a series in a while. But apparently it did well enough that, yeah, they greenlit a series. The series, however, has changed the character of Moon Knight. Uh, he's less of a complicated character. And more of that type of street-level vigilante that was just really popular in the late 80s, early 90s. So it's kind of like the Punisher. And we had a lot of characters like that. We had Solo. And this is just at Marvel, by the way. I'm not even counting DC. But we had characters like Solo. We had characters like Silver Sable and the Wild Pack. And actually, they show up here. So through these pages, he gets to meet some of the New York characters. Including Spider-Man. I love this right here, by the way. He doesn't really meet Spider-Man in this issue. It's just a couple of pages. It just showcases Spider-Man taking pictures of Moon Knight beating up some of Bushman's goons. And then he just goes away to the Daily Bugle to get his money for his rent. That's pretty much the cameo. They don't even meet. So really, he meets Black Cat before meeting Spider-Man. But believe me, he's about to meet Spider-Man. He has a team up here with, well, not Dr. Voodoo, but Brother Voodoo. 
Now, in the background of everything, as of issue number... I believe it was issue number five. No, I was wrong. Issue number four. We're introduced... This is uh, one that actually has artwork by Russ Heath. We're introduced to this character of Midnight. Now, this particular Midnight is different than the Midnight that was Moon Knight's enemy in Doug Mencha's series, the Bilson Kevich series. This is a different Midnight. And he does have some kind of relations to the original Midnight, and you can find out for yourself who he is. Oh, there's the Brother Voodoo I was just talking about. So yes, he's Brother Voodoo during this time, and Midnight and Moon Knight and Frenchie and Voodoo team up to fight a bunch of zombies. So yes, this is the new Midnight, and his name is Jeff Wilde. And Jeff Wilde is just infatuated with becoming Moon Knight's sidekick. And Moon Knight is like, you're just a kid, man. I can't take you on. So there's a team up with the Punisher here. Acts of Vengeance plays a role in this where he has to uh, fight Flag Smasher. And later on, he fights the killer Shriek. And brand new villains like Coach Whip. That, yeah, Coach Whip and the new Ringer. But he keeps, like, rejecting Midnight's help. Midnight is a kid. You know, he's kind of like your sidekick, like Bucky or Robin to Batman. He just doesn't want to stop being a sidekick because he thinks that's his legacy. That's what he is going to do. And Moon Knight is pretty stern with, like, no, you can't just keep coming on these missions. There are people here that are trying to kill me. So Bushman comes back a couple of times. And this is the Silver Sable and uh, Wild Pack story. Now, this is the trial of Mark Spector. It's a four-issue yeah, event right here. And the thing that I noticed about part one and just a little bit of part two are, man, these colors sure could have used some touch-up. They are rough. I don't know if the original colors look like this i had i got rid of my moon knight comics many that's oh, been over two decades now so i can't remember if the original colors look like this there's a lot of color mistakes and sometimes the color just goes outside of like the skin tones and and clothing and it's just for a couple of issues see and this is something like i'm talking about like i guess that's carpet going over his foot the color of the carpet and the color of the filing cabinet is going over his foot and I don't have my original comics to compare it to. And it's just for like the first part and a little bit of part two. The rest of it looks like the rest of the book. And that's something very important to me. Because that's something that they do in the Marvel Masterworks. Like Corey and his team will go in there and clean up the color palettes and things like that. And if you're looking at stuff like this or original comics, you learn to appreciate the restoration of colors. Like it is an actual art form to go in there and make it look like the way that you think you remember it and actually changing it. So it could be the scans because I noticed a little bit of the those dots right there on the colors, just vaguely. And it's not on every comic. All right, now we're introduced to the Secret Empire, but that is something that I wanted to note. It's just like an issue and a half where the colors look just a little bit rough. And you can probably tell that as the series continues, or the four-part uh, event continues, it looks better. Now, that event, or the four-issue, the four-part event, was about the crimes that Mark Spector did when he was a mercenary, and now those crimes are from his past are coming to haunt him, because there's this fictional nation in, I think it's in South America, maybe Central America, where they're holding him accountable for a lot of the things, a lot of the sins that he committed, so... He's a, it's got a pretty strong message about, you know, infiltrating in somebody else's country and what the outcome of that could be. That was a pretty good story. And then we have the return of the Secret Empire, who played a role in Moon Knight's life in the past. But now he is teaming up with Punisher and Spider-Man to take them down. And it is in these stories, by the way, that was a Rob Liefeld cover right there. With Moon Knight, Punisher, and Spidey. And then you have a Jackson Geis cover. And I believe it's Dennis Cohen that does this one, if I'm not mistaken. Man, my memory is not what it used to be. Sal Valudo, Tom Palmer doing the inks now. So Tom Palmer stepping in as inker. He's a wonderful inker. But you could definitely tell the difference in his inks from Mark Farmer's inks. Mark Farmer's finishes are a lot smoother than the roughs that Tom Palmer adds. But I like that. It kind of gives it a Joe Kubert kind of finish to people's artwork. I was a big fan of Tom Palmer's art. 
Oh, yes. And we also get new villains like Arsenal and Chainsaw. This is the, what is it? The Moonwing, I think is what it's called. But that's the one that Frenchie drives. And, and Frenchie starts actually developing a relationship with Chloe, the cook that Marlene was jealous of towards the beginning. I like that he was giving him more and more uh, to do. This is Chainsaw again. Now this is his revenge for putting him on trial. But I want to go back to this right here, the story with the Secret Empire, because the Secret Empire storyline where he teams up with Punisher and Spider-Man is where Midnight, his sidekick, kind of is left for dead. Like, Moon Knight keeps pushing him away and is like, no, we can't go on these missions. They're way too dangerous. And he's like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And he does. And in this particular story, he gets wounded. Now, in the background of the rest of the Chuck Dixon run, you start seeing them like the Secret Empire kind of not mind wiping Jeff Midnight, but kind of manipulating him and turning him more and more into a cyborg, so less of a man. And it's here that he starts building the idea of, okay, this is the sidekick. He was left for dead. Now he wants to hold Moon Knight accountable for what he did. And then Chuck Dixon ends up leaving the book. And I don't know why. I, I don't know if there was some editorial uh, difference back then or he went on to work at DC and just made it exclusively to DC. Uh, but then we got a couple of fill-in writers. Like we have the team up here with Ghost Rider. And this is Danny Ketch, Ghost Rider. And this is written by Howard Mackey, who was writing Ghost Rider at the time. Oh, this story right here was so solid. This is the return of of a character, Stained Glass Scarlet, um, creator, uh, created by Doug Mensch and Bill Sienkiewicz. And this is Scarlet Redemption. It is written by Jam DeMatteis and drawn by Ron Garney with inks by Tom Palmer. So this is about her return. And it kind of gives us a little bit of what Moon Knight used to be. You know, with, with Chuck Dixon's run, it was more about that street level vigilante type of character. With J.M. DeMatteis walking into the book, it takes us back to those Doug Mench and Bill Sienkiewicz era of making him more of a complex character with some supernatural elements thrown in. And him questioning his sanity, and it's all because of this one character that returned. And it's a five-part storyline, and it goes on for a long time, but it is a solid story. There, Actually, it's kind of a six-part storyline because it, there is a um, an epilogue. Then we get the Hobgoblin storyline right here. And Killer Shriek making a return. And then we get the sidekick's revenge. So this is what I was going to be talking about. So it was important for me to talk a little bit about Jeff Wilde, Midnight, and why this story took place. So Danny Fingeroth was the editor on Moon Knight when Chuck Dixon was building up this character of Midnight. But then Chuck Dixon left the book, J.M. DeMatteis came on, and then eventually it would be Terry Kavana. And nobody touched on this character. So I really love when editors step in and remember things, or I guess write things down. and maybe, Or it could have been Fingeroth's idea, I don't know. But he asked Al Milgram to come in and write this story about the sidekick, Moon Knight's sidekick. But of all places, he did it in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man. Mark Bagley doing the artwork here. And I remember this specifically being one of the first places I saw Moon Knight as a kid. I wasn't that big into Moon Knight. I knew of his comic. I knew that he, he was a character from the, I assume, the 60s. But it, later on, of course, I found out that was not true. It was the 70s and, uh, and then later on the 80s. But he had been gone from Marvel Comics. I mean, outside of West Coast Avengers, you never really saw him anyplace. This was the first comic that I remember going, huh, okay, so this is a Moon Knight character? Because, yes, they explain who Jeff Wilde was, who he was to Moon Knight, and when he wants revenge. And I was already a fan of Spider-Man. I was already buying New Warriors. And I was starting to buy some of those issues of uh, Punisher. I think it was Mike Barron at the time that was writing them. Uh, but I, Moon Knight was just a character. I was like, eh, all right, he's pretty cool. I've seen him in West Coast Avengers and... But I really like the story in here, so it made me go out and buy some issues of Moon Knight. And I really dug them. I was like, okay, this character's kind of like Batman meets the Punisher, but with a little bit of a twist. And then, of course, that led into the path of going and find back issues and finding out completely different storytelling when it came to the character of Moon Knight. 
But this is Sidekick's Revenge. It is a huge team up between Moon Knight, some of the new warriors, uh, Punisher, Darkhawk steps in here. And it's all about taking down the Secret Empire and, of course, this new character, Midnight, who has turned evil because of what Moon Knight did to him. And that's pretty much what this story is. It's a six-part story. And I do want to say for the people that know about this, and we're hoping that the cover was a fold-out, issue 358 is not a gatefold cover. It doesn't fold out. I was kind of hoping it would be a fold-out page, and it's not like... Marvel or DC hasn't done that before in Omnis. I was kind of hoping this would do the same thing. But you do get the cover like this in a spread page. And then this is the wrap-up issue right here. And then we get the Bruce Jones, Dennis Cohen graphic novel, Moon Knight Divided We Fall. And this is where the standard edition cover came from. It's a story of the return of Bushman, but this time instead of just going after Moon Knight, he is using normal people, turning them into zombie-like creatures, and them turning on the world's leaders. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, The Naked Gun, the first movie. I don't know why my mind went there. I hadn't read this in years. As a matter of fact, outside of the Spider-Man Round Robin, or the Sidekick's Revenge, I hadn't read this stuff in decades. So it was a nice trip, you know, or I guess a nice walk down memory lane to me. I don't know if everybody will feel like that because I have nostalgia when it comes to these issues. But I guess mileage may vary when it comes to this. I think it's an interesting time for Moon Knight. Um, so, yes. The first part, before we get to the Scarlet Redemption by J.M. DeMatteis, really does feel like Batman meets a little bit of the Punisher. As a matter of fact, you know, you have Jean-Paul Duchamp, Frenchy, that's what he calls, or that's what he calls him. Kind of playing the role of Alfred, you know, going on missions with him but not putting himself in danger. He gets beat up from time to time. So that's the dynamic between both of them. He kind of cares for Mark Spector. And because they got rid of the idea of the multiple personalities, which I'm not saying it's gone fully because you'll see a little bit of it in here. Um, he feels more like a character like Bruce Wayne. You know, daytime it's Mark Spector. Nighttime I'm dressing up as Moon Knight and beating up baddies. So that's what that feels like. And then you get a little more of the old school feeling when J.M. DeMatteis steps in as the writer. But me, I can't wait for the second book. Here, let's look at the extras. And let's welcome everybody back that didn't want any kind of spoilers at all. Uh, but what I was saying, this is not spoilery, but me, I can't wait for the second book. The second omnibus of this doesn't have the greatest Moon Knight stories. As a matter of fact, they're kind of bad, but the artwork is phenomenal, especially those last five issues. I know he didn't draw all five, but... When Steven Platt comes on board, oh my gosh, those are the comics to get. And this is what the extras look like. You have some handbook stuff back here with updated looks for some of the characters. The Round Robin Sidekick's Revenge. Trade paperback cover. I think when I came back to comics, since I didn't have the single issues of Spidey, I bought this. Uh, that's uh, Dwayne Turner cover. Al Milgram right here. This is a trade paperback pinup. Trading cards. And original artwork here. These are covers. John Romita Sr., Dennis Cohen, Mark Bagley, and Tom Palmer doing the inks. And one thing I forgot to mention, and this is not a spoiler whatsoever, is during the Scarlet Redemption six-part series, because there is an epilogue, Bill Sienkiewicz returns as the cover artist. I love that, that they went and got Bill to do these covers. All right, let's talk about the binding. 1,064 pages... And it is sewn binding. Not that much of an eye. This one's printed at the iMac printer. So we're going to be looking at... Actually, let's go back to the cover I was talking about. So I think this can showcase exactly how the book lays over. Not a lot of spread pages through this issues of Moon Knight. Uh, this is just one of the few that I can use as an example. Uh, because this both showcases how the book lays over. So you have... Some gutter loss right there. I mean, you can obviously tell by the M going missing unless you push it down like this. Or the rest of the D and the E right there. And, of course, it showcases some of the light areas right here. The white. So you can see how much bleed through there is. And there's a little bit. You can see some of the panels coming through. Let me see if I can find something earlier on. A lot of Moon Knight, of course, takes place at night. So, we're looking for some light pages or some white on his... Oh, well, yes, he does have white on his cape. So you can see a little bit of the word bubble coming in from the opposite page right there. And some of the panel. 
yeah, you can tell like that's a panel right there and right there. And a little bit up there. So this is another spread page example. I think the cover of 258 or 358 did a better job because it's kind of hard to tell when it's just a cape. But when it's like letters, you can tell a little bit more of the gutter loss. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up. So a lot of the stories here are new to collected editions, and I love that about this book. So let me know if you've never read any of the stories here, if you're going into this completely blind because you're a fan of Moon Knight, whether it's the show or whether it's some of the omnis that you've already picked up. And then if you've read this stuff, what you think about this particular era of Moon Knight. Like I mentioned, this was my childhood era growing up with the character of Moon Knight. So this means a lot to me and hopefully we'll get a volume too. So any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.